Hey, Sierra Leone. Is that the stripper we met? That is a country where we are ranked in the top 10 of comedy podcasts. Welcome to another episode of Zig and Larry Ignore Topic, where we will be doing just that momentarily. Good news is, is that if you're ignoring the topic, there's really no way to fuck it up. Um, we, we've Hang on. Hold on, um, unless we have fucked it up already. <laughs> we have fucked it up already. <laughs> hey, viewers. Uh, you, you get to see how the sausage is made here. Uh, I had a, a right error uh, on, and not like the English, oh, that was a right error. Um, it was uh, W-R-I-T on the, uh, so we're going to try this again. Hold on. We never write the show. Somebody ought to. There we go. Welcome to another episode of Two Middle-Aged Men in White Tank Tops. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, uh, Beef Parfait. <laughs> He's the thick one. I'm the melty one. Nope, okay. that's still also a problem. Good, good, good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I... Oh boy. Oh yeah. I'm waiting for it. This is okay, so um I'm fine with there not being a plan. You know I hate plans. Fuck yeah, plans. Plan, plan. Yeah, who needs a plan? Um I don't have any other memory cards. Um except for those two. And when those two don't work, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> we'll be right back. Hold on. Seamless. All right. What is happening, Larry? I'm scared. I uh, <laughs> I feel it going, Dave. <laughs> Which button should I push on my head? Where's the <laughs> oscillator on this thing? Daisy. I feel like Hal right now, and everything is malfunctioning. I uh, so uh, sorry. Minor technical glitches on our end. We're uh. Gonna be doing the best we can. Uh, fingers. We're crossed. saying this is going to work today. I'm saying this is going to work. If nothing else, we're willing it <laughs> at this point. Yeah. If nothing else, we'll have a video for the YouTube channel. Uh, yikes. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Zig and Larry Ignore a podcast uh, where um, uh, everything has gone wrong so far. Today has been a weird day already. Today has been this just this just is tracks for me. I was I was telling Larry before the podcast. I've never played a sport in my life really, and just by being old in Florida, I got myself this horrific jock itch, which yeah. is a first time malady for me. It's fun. It's fun walking around Home Depot with that, with your old <laughs> balls and your gut hanging over your belt at forty five. I've had the Jesus. Jock itch. It's not it's terrible. No, yeah. no, it's it's not, it's not, it's not fun. Uh, I was reminded by the fact that I'm ridiculously old by that. Um, also, uh, so Larry, this this is my hat, right? Yeah. I have I have several hats, but this is the one you've seen this hat before, right? The go-to, yeah. No, you haven't actually seen this one, but you'd be forgiven to think you had. For last night, I had a bonfire. Uh, so during the bonfire, no, 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 it's nothing that interesting. But this morning I put my hat on and it reeked of the bonfire. Sure. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wash this. I don't want to wear it. I don't want to smell this all day. You know what I mean? It smells like smoke. So I put it, but I'm going to wash it later. So I was rummaging around in the closet of my, of my many, my, my many hats. And I found this, which is the exact same nondescript charcoal colored hat that I was wearing before. I, I, I own two of them. And as I was chuckling to myself, holding a, a smoky hat in one hand, putting this one on my head. I found a third. No shit. Uh, I have purchased three nondescript charcoal baseball caps may and I, had no idea that I had done it. May I ask? Was yes. it was it like a, a, a bundle purchase off of Amazon or was it three separate purchases that you made like when you were out at a store and went, you know what i like that hat and then you got home and you're like oh fuck i'm already wearing one just like it oh, uh no well. these 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 have been purchased uh off of amazon okay. uh all of them i know that to be true because i also have this hat in red and one in like a tan just because i like it and they're like six bucks and then but they you know they hold up really well yeah uh, but i had had the same thought three times 
without ever realizing I must have like lost it, bought it, lost it, bought it again. Now I know where all three are. So if you'd like one, <laughs> you can have one of mine. Great. Yeah, because what my wife would love is if I had one more ball cap <laughs> that looks exactly like all the other ball. I, I'm standing in my closet with all three of them in my hand trying to discern, like, no, one of these has to be just a slightly different color or something. No. Nope. Same company? Yeah. 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 Exact same hat. Correct. Well, I, uh, last weekend, we had family weekend uh, for Willow at Bradley. Um, and so we went out just for Saturday and hung out. Bradley and, being the college, not a gentleman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. College, not a gentleman. Um, <laughs> you and your daughter had family weekend on a man. Yeah, we had family. <laughs> we got, we wandered around inside of Bradley. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh my God, that's water. Oh, no. Make seven up yours. Ah, whew, mm-hmm. okay. Good, it's, good. It's been neglected so long, there's dust on this body. It's been in the garage. <laughs> I totally just, forgot we had a six pack of that shit. I'm just, uh, I was just concerned because, you know, can't trust water. fish fucking water, buddy. Correct. You know that. Um, but yeah, so we we go to the bookstore, and because Willow wanted like she's like I only have like one Bradley sweatshirt and one Bradley. She was you know she's a freshman. She's and she's all about school. Sure. So she wants she wants some more stuff, um, and I wanted a ball cap because that's you know my thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted a, a Bradley ball cap. There was like some really nice fitted ones. Okay. Um, and they had like some flat bill ones, and I'm like I am never I don't I'm not getting that. But, you know, some nice fitted ones, and I kept trying on like, different fitted ones. I'm like, these just don't look good. And Willow's like, get the dad hat. And I'm like, it's literally called dad hat, you know. <laughs> and it's it, very similar to that, that you're wearing. This is a six-panel fucking ball cap. Yeah. Except this one has mesh. So it's got oh, the, there you go. And then mesh on the back. She's like, just put it on. I was like, I don't want another one of the... I've already got my drive-by trucker's hat, all my merch... Turns out I pick up the dad hat. It's made by the same company as makes my merch hats. Um, nice. And I looked at it. She goes, put it on. And I put it on. It fits perfectly. It looks. Yep. Like, and I was like, son of a. Fine. I'm getting the stupid dad. hat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it on. I was like, oh, this looks great. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm trying to wear it for like. Nice ish. Because, you know, everything else just has sweat stains. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep this one relatively nice um godspeed it's no. never it's never as easy as you want it to be no i i sweat so much you yeah. know what uh, you know amass that uh the charcoal six dollar caps from amazon charcoal six dollar i recommend getting a half dozen because you never know when you're gonna get extra heads right yeah it's uh you never know when there might be a, an occasion oh I yeah, realized. I wear this fucking thing so often. I was in a Zoom with uh, people from work the other day. I took oh. it off. One of the person just goes, oh, what? I thought you were fucking bald. <laughs> yeah. No, eh. I, I have hair. You know what? I just realized. Um, I have no idea. Uh, there's no timer. Oh, okay. Well, let's assume we've been pissing about for six minutes. Ten minutes. Six to ten minutes. <laughs> I was gonna say fifteen. So <laughs> okay, okay. So we are at. Uh, man, I didn't bring a watch. Uh, I got a. The, you, there's got to be a fucking clock on the screen you're staring at. Yeah, but I'm not good at math. You're not good at math. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you you don't know what roughly fifteen to forty five minutes from now is. <laughs> Come on, guess for me. <laughs> Hold on, viewers. This will be fun for you at home. It is one twenty-five right now in the afternoon, Larry. Let's say fifty minutes from now. What time is that? One twenty-five, my time. Fifty minutes from now would be one fifteen. There you go. Your time. Twelve fifteen or one fifteen, my time. Yeah, there you go. Your time. Twelve fifteen. Uh, Soul. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be in fifty minutes? March. I don't know. <laughs> I told you I'm not good at math. Martin Luther King Day. I don't remember. That's why they were like, yes, you can be in the advanced English and writing courses. Uh, d- d- math? No, no. No, you already did that. You did what, <laughs> You did all the things you have to do. Let's keep you out of there so your GPA doesn't get tanked. 
I remember I was okay at algebra, but anything after that, I was just like, guess what? I'll be cheating. Just so we're all aware. <laughs> I will be cheating. I'll be doing spectacularly on homework and failing the quizzes. <laughs> Tests that I know are coming up amazingly well. I, uh, I, I was really good at geometry. And then they sent me to algebra two. So it was pre-algebra, algebra, geometry. Algebra 2, I great in geometry. Got to Algebra 2, and I was like, none of this makes any sense. Just, well, we're solving for X. Why? Why are we solving for X? <laughs> Is there Let, money X in it? Let just X be its own thing. Can X just be happy being alone? Can we, <laughs> how about numbers? Can we do numbers? Well, you get those mixed up, too. Yeah, I sure do. I, uh, mm -hmm. That's, uh, it, yeah. That was actually uh, my algebra teacher discovered that sometimes I transpose numbers. Um, and so like he went through a quiz and it was 15 questions. And he's like, you got all of them wrong. He called me into like into class. It was after school. He's like, you got everything wrong. He goes, and then I started realizing that you were on each one. You were transposing the last two numbers on the, the second set of numbers. So like two, let's say two hundred and fifty four divided by one hundred and fifty eight. I was doing one eighty five. One fifteen after in the afternoon. Yeah, one fifteen. <laughs> so I instead of one fifty eight, I was switching it into one eighty five. Mm. And when I when he did the numbers for that, and it was consistent, he's like, "So I knew you weren't stupid. So <laughs> you just have a, a mild case of number dyslexia." And oh. I was like, oh, and he goes, I, and I say that because I have the same thing. Oh, like, shit. You're an algebra teacher. And he goes, uh-huh. And it took me years to figure it out. And it was, uh, he goes, it took me until I was in college when a professor was like, you're actually very good at math. You just don't realize it. And here's why. And he's like, and now I know how to, you know, work around it. So, yeah, I, that's why when someone's like, hey, can you do this? Mm-mm. No, no, I'm just going to embarrass myself. Not only does math suck, but my subconscious mind is fucking screwing me over yeah. because it doesn't want to succeed at this. And when you ask me to do it, I panic. Like my brain's like, well, you'll never figure that out because because you're uh, because <laughs> you are um, uh, special needs is what you are. <laughs> but I'm something stuck in my teeth. Me uh, but, but Gideon, we God the... love him. You can like he'll he would look over Glenn's shoulder at, or Willow's. And like, oh, it's this. And give him the answer. Like, I'm supposed to figure it out on my own. He goes, you took too long. I figured it out. He, he, <laughs> he can, he can, he's, uh, well, like one of my jokes, he's like Rain Man, but stupid. <laughs> Love him. Well, we were the last generation that was told you're not always going to have a calculator in your pocket. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> well. What I loved is like half the kids in class had them on their wrists because they had calculator yeah. watches. And like, well, we got them right here. Those no. those Texas Instrument calculators, those were excellent because they had the, the the case that slid on and off, and you could easily put a crib sheet in between the case and your uh, your calculator and cheat your balls off. Yeah, we uh we actually had a teacher that would come around. You had to hold up. Every oh, day. did you? Nice. Yeah, yeah they played that game before. I uh, and again, that's why after junior high, I did the exact minimum of math, and I was just like, I, I just, I just went in and hung out with Mister Riley. I liked him as a as a human. We hung out like I just could be like, hey, what's up, Riley? And then sit down and chill out in his class, or after you know after school, I'll be like, looking back on it, could that have been grooming? No, because. No, oh, too bad. No, no, because I was I was consenting. There it is. There yeah. it is. There yep. we go. <laughs> no, no, no. He he said it was okay, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he informed me it was fine. Okay. Hold on, let me try it again. No, no, no. He was older than me, so it can't be grooming. I don't. <laughs> is algebra supposed to smell and make you sore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. I know, well, it made me cry. I love. <laughs> you lie about that. What the fuck? algebra uh, yeah uh, i took one math class in college i only had to take one it was easier than math in high school and i still got a c because i never showed up yeah yeah i uh, 
and I did I did everything when I went back to 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 college. I did everything in my power. Like I was good at statistics. Don't know why. My brain was fine with statistics because there was I think there was something to apply because I I could apply things to you know like oh this is this makes sense because this does this and this does this and I can figure out statistics. I'm good at statistics. Math? No. No, no. I'm not good. Dude, what's 20 plus 48? All of them? Yeah, it's uh, uh one less than a fun number. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what's 20 plus 48 why is that important to you <laughs> who's asking who's what asking? do you need what do you have 20 of that you need 48 more of <laughs> and maybe you should give some of those away you yeah fucking bastard uh but yeah i just i did everything to avoid like regular math and so like my advisor was like well you have to take a math class and uh it was i forget what other it was another professor that was like he's already taken statistics and advanced statistics i don't think he needs more math he's he's good on the math it's like we're good with math yeah yeah we don't need to do more math uh god bless my goddamn high school they didn't give a shit i remember in uh in my history teacher i'm sure he's dead now uh every friday we would just watch part of like ghostbusters like that, that was it. Uh, he he would basically just like, hey, so uh, today we're gonna learn about, uh, I don't know why I didn't vote for Nixon. Let's talk about that for a little bit. That but I I learned nothing from this man. Uh, and chemistry was interesting. Uh, every time we had a test, the teacher left, <laughs> and she told us very specifically she would be back in thirty five minutes. Love it. Well, that was <laughs> oh so- okay. So we're cheating then. Yes, good. James St. James was great. Like he would. His because he was a memory and cognition specialist, like that's what it, all of his uh, head, research uh, was in. Head of the uh psych department, yeah, Milligan. yeah. Yep. And so, for him, he never used a textbook, you just had to take really good notes on what he lectured. If you felt like you had any gap in your notes, you could go to him and be like, Hey, I'm not sure on this, you know, this confuses me. Um, he would be happy to work with you on stuff. To make sure that you had every, because it was, all of his tests were open note. Mm. So everything that was on the test, he he said out loud. But if you were working and you realized, oh shit, I didn't take good enough notes in this area. You could look at somebody in, you know, next to you or in the, you just be like, hey, does anyone have good notes on this? At whatever and mm-hmm. somebody would be like, oh, yeah, it's usually my buddy Ryan. But like, oh, yeah, I get here. You borrow, borrow my section. And I'm, okay, cool. Thanks. And then you could pass, literally pass your notes huh. around so that because he was teaching you one, nobody can remember everything. It's stupid to ask anyone to try to re- remember anything. Two, you learn better. <laughs> it's stupid to try to, stupid to ask you to try to remember anything. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I mean, he, but but the, he had tw- twenty years of research in memory and cognition before he even became a professor. Mm-hmm. So he knew what he was talking. And he was like, just he's like, this is an extension of your long term memory. He said, and you only have so much bandwidth to remember. He goes, and I don't want you to like force it into your brain for the forty five minutes it takes you to take the test, and then immediately walk out here and forget it. I want this to be in your brain. He said, and the more you look at it over notes and the more you actually practice it, he said, additionally, no research is done solo. You always have at least one research partner, sometimes five, who you will look at to, you know, run checks and balances for you. He's like, so in this class, you're all research partners so you will collaborate and i was like that's awesome and then you bring it, up, bring it up to some of the other psych professors and they're like well that's not what we do in this class i'm like right yes because you are bad at your job I <laughs> this is so awful but yeah that was uh it it, it it initially felt like cheating like the first the first test 
we got it back and he was like, you all could have done better. And I'm disappointed because none of you spoke to each other. It was obviously there was gaps here. There was gaps here. There were gaps here. Um, so next time fucking talk to each other. I'm not good. I'm not, I graded this on a curve. I never do a curve. Uh, but I, this was real embarrassing for all of you. And I was like, lovely. <laughs> and then my buddy Ryan and I were leaving. And he's like, not you boys. You did fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. But uh, it was it was his classes were some of them that I, I tried the hardest in because, you know, n- knowing him, having been friends with him, I was like, the last thing I want to do is disappoint him. You know, I don't want him yeah. to, be, to be like this dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps calling me ox. <laughs> Uh, it's funny he did have several nicknames. corn fed was one of them lovely yeah but uh yeah that was it, 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 actually a, an enjoyable aspect of of college i i didn't hate my second go round hmm. i wish i would have waited i mean i didn't do anything but party for four years yeah well I just I wasted that fresh the, all the money on freshman year went away for a few months and then came back and yeah. just worked and hung out and partied for the rest of college because it was like ah, I'm wasting less money. How old were you when you went back? Twenty three. Okay. So yeah, it was after. Ouch, I mean, little maybe about a year after every everyone else had graduated. Mm-hmm. So I went back when I had no one I knew and no temptation to <laughs> right. to just fuck off. Except that then I went to work, you know, I, I bartended. Right. But even then, I worked my tits off. Um, I, I might... I miss show. your tits. Uh, yeah, they were great. Mm-hmm. Uh, double D's, uh, round, perky. 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 Perky's the right word. Yeah, yeah. Not a freckle on the little fellas. No, not at all. Mm. Um, like you think double D's would be ungainly, but they weren't. They just not on your frame. Not on no. your frame. No, weren't look great, but yeah, alas, I had to had to work my tits off. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just to pay for books. <laughs> There's a fucking racket textbooks. Yeah, Willow was bitching about it was that that was funny. Willow was bitching about the cost of textbooks. And uh, her mom was like, what are you complaining about? You're not paying for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just kind of, I nudged her. And I was like, yeah, no kidding. She's like, I know you had to pay for everything. And I was like, but I appreciate you, don't we? I said, we appreciate that you are conscious of cost of things. But the last thing you need to worry about is you're fine. You're fine right now. So that, but yeah, that was. It, she has a completely different uh, experience than than us. Mm. Like she's, she has gone to parties, but she goes in a group. They go in a group like of like eight to ten girls. Uh, they take their own drink. They yeah. never put it down, and I'm like, good. Yeah. And then when they leave, when one of when one of them's like, I think I want to go, they're like, all right, everybody. <laughs> Right, and they move the herd. <laughs> get, get the gaggle together. <laughs> but like the other night, I had my own drink too when I went to a party. But usually it was with a bottle of Southern Comfort. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of pocket full of screwdrivers. She's just taking yeah. a water bottle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was the other night. It was like Friday night. Uh, she was text or, or sending me stuff, and I'm like, I, th- I was like, are you at your dorm room? She's like, yeah. I said, it's 9.30 on a Friday. She's uh, like, I'm tired and I want to watch television. <laughs> like, there you go. No shame. No shame. You know what? Good for you, kid. She's like, I had a bunch of work to do. And then I got worn out. And then I ate some chicken strips. And now I'm just sitting <laughs> on, the, on the futon. <laughs> like, awesome. Right. I, I am so proud. You know, because what she could be doing is out there enjoying some spliffsociety.org. And I'm proud hey! that she's choosing to do her homework instead and and waiting until she's the appropriate age, 21 in Illinois. Um, however, uh, however, Spliff Society does say that their product does promote uh, healthy study habits. 
It does. Yes, absolutely. They say that right on their website at SwiftSociety.org. Yeah, check out the website. They are all about uh, the studying at uh, SwiftSociety.org. Uh, they have a, a, a specific cone that you can pack with your favorite herb when you're 21 uh, and not living on campus where it is not allowed, even if you are 21. So... <laughs> Because who would do that on a college campus? Not us. Not us. You know what? You don't have to be 21 to buy anything from SpliffSociety.org. <laughs> SpliffSociety.org. Because it, it does not come loaded. You no. load it yourself with delicious herbs um, and spices. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I do. I'd like to load mine up with, with delicious herbs and spices and call it the kernel. <laughs> what is this? Weed and coriander. Why? <laughs> because I'm insane. <laughs> this is a little oregano, uh, some paprika, and a trip to the hospital. <laughs> I always put a little sage in my pot because there's constantly demons around demons, me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I like to smudge my brain while I smudge my brain. I put a little angel dust in there too, so I can definitely see them. <laughs> so I like I can, because I don't like to, I don't like to go into Seven Eleven and rob it if I feel me myself getting shot. So just a little bit of angel dust really takes the edge off of really life. Good. Yeah, yeah. And I, then I can see I can see the demons. I don't want those little bastards being invisible. I can see them, and they're usually behind the counter, uh, holding a sawed-off shotgun, telling me no, no new ports. Just, just a little bit of PCP and meth, and I tell you what, you're going to have an interesting story. But someone else is going to have to relate to you because you won't remember it from all the tasing. <laughs> SplitSociety.org. So- all the tasing. <laughs> Check them out. Uh, use promo code Zig and Larry. <laughs> Check out. <laughs> Check out for the tasing. For the tasing. Oh. Hey, Sierra they... Leone. Go to SplitSociety.org. Sierra Leone. Will they ship to Sierra Leone? I don't see why not. I, I don't. I can't imagine. I think Post Brad, goes there. Bradford would probably hand deliver it to Sierra Leone. <laughs> Fire up the chopper. <laughs> We need the super yacht. <laughs> All right, buddy. I got a topic for today. My nuts are on fire. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I told you not to sit on that. What's good for that? Cornstarch? What do you put on that? What's good? Uh, right now, if it's mayonnaise, uh, you're, you're going to want to slather that down with some Miracle Whip. Uh, we are a Dukes and or um, QP Mayo house. See, there, we do not only, do Miracle Whip. That will only uh, feed the uh, the the bacteria that are Good. eating away at your at your testicles. Um, what you're going to? That was a fungus. Is it a fungus or a bacteria that's eating away at my testicles right now? Uh, it depends on how long it's been there. Two days. So it's still just a fungus. Mm, good. Good. What the why my nuts look like morel mushrooms right. it's just on the left side it's fucking annoying yeah it's i think, uh, I, it's I, think I got it in my sleep oh yeah because it's uh are you looking up what's growing on my balls right now yes good yeah i'm just looking at your only fans about it mm-hmm. oddly oh, enough blowing okay. up yeah, it's very specific. Not worth, not worth it, but uh, interesting uh, experiment nonetheless. Uh, so okay, here's the. I I thought I could pull it up on my phone. I haven't talked about my hemorrhoids in a little bit. We could do that too. I'm just trying to get people to turn this off. Well, so far so good. I'm. I almost, <laughs> I almost did. Um, <laughs> there, Jesus. Okay. There, I th- okay, I think I can have it up on my phone. If not, well, we've got the backup. God damn it. Um, if they haven't turned it off yet, they're not turning it off now. Um, okay, so I had an idea for for a show, and then yeah. um, I uh, immediately, when I went to send you the link for this episode, saw an article and went, you know what? And I, I clicked through the first three. And I immediately, with each one, went, fuck you. Um, Ooh. 
Yeah. So you, you course corrected for anger. Yeah, because uh, the writer, Amanda Wright, has to was be... Was that the same uh, Wright error that we were getting before? Yes. Yeah, it must be. She, she's fucking everything up. Um, so, yeah. So we, we hate Amanda, I'm assuming? Uh, not a big fan of Amanda Wright right okay. now. Okay, very good. Uh, because, um, I don't know, I would, I would very much like to see uh, if she's a like young millennial or an older Gen Z uh, for writing this article because uh, Amanda, you don't know shit about fuck. You don't know shit about fuck uh, based on these first three things. Um, So here's the name. Here's the article name. Okay. 17 outdated Gen X trends that should go now. Okay. Okay. Now, we're baby Gen X. We're like the last of the Gen Xers. We are. Yeah. We are, I, I still refuse to, to, to subscribe to Xennials. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I can't. I, I can't say that. Without, I'm telling you, I just want I just want that little gap that we kind of fall in to just be the Goonies. Can we just be the Goonie generation? I'm fine with that. Right. Or it's, even just you and me. We were born the same week. Yeah, we're Goonies. Yeah, we're Goonies. Okay. Goonies never die. We just get sore for no reason. <laughs> we just fall apart in horrible ways. But the problem is none of this is going to take me with it. No. No, I just, I'm just sore and angry for a couple of days. And then, mm-hmm. and then somebody pulls the pin out of the fucking voodoo doll. <laughs> and, I'm, and then I'm back to being able to pick up heavy things. Some so goddamn gypsy made a mom out of me. And now I'm thinner. And now I'm in fucking pain. Well, that's and I know I'm not supposed to use that word, but I like it. It's just such a good word. <laughs> Nicole is convinced that somebody has like she's like the more I see of things, she's like somebody has to have a voodoo doll of you. Just like he's had it too good for, <laughs> too, for too long. He's just been in chronic pain since he was, you know, 15 years old. Let's let's really fuck with him though. That's... It's Sunday afternoon. Remember to twist the Smith doll. <laughs> Why is that? Because his shoulders felt good for like a month let's uh throw it in the ferret enclosure <laughs> <laughs> does it have little testicles yeah we put the little testicles on there. <laughs> yeah uh i don't know spray that with something so they get itchy you got it put everything bagel seasoning on that and give it to the chihuahua see what happens <laughs> let's see what goes on so these are as my phone closes down 17 outdated gen x trends that should go now. Now I'm going to give these to you, and then I'm we're going to refute them, because this. Okay. I should be nicer. I will. No. I will. I will not call Amanda Wright a dim bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love when he laughs so loud that Zoom goes. We got to cut this out. We got to. <sighs> that's too loud. Mm-hmm. Um. I like. I love when you. Uh, love it when I'm this angry at people because <laughs> I just I, that's great. A dim bitch is phenomenal. That just that just that just tickled my pickle right on the yeah, end. Right it's, on the it's tip. one of my favorite phrases to call people. You, especially when you, you dim bitch. <laughs> that's good. That's just like a little. That's like a little bump of coke right on your urethra hole. Yep. That's just like a little hello. Just hello. a boop. Like yep. like you you, go, you lick the tip of your finger. You go and then boop. And yep, just, that's all you need. All right, so the first thing, the first Gen X trend that should go now, Zig, Mm -hmm. and we're going to refute this because fuck you. Okay, we'll stick with fuck you. Disregarding green issues. What? Yeah. In the past, we could afford to be oblivious to our environmental footprint. But in today's world, there's an urgent need to transition towards sustainable practice. It's about time we bid farewell to the Gen X trend of neglecting environmental concerns and embracing green. Bitch! We were the first generation that embraced... You're thinking of my mom. Yeah, you're thinking of Boomer, not Gen X, maybe older Gen X, but our, our section of Gen X, we were the first ones to sit down and watch, to watch the, the, uh, what was it, uh, the uh, world day where bet midler played a sad mother nature we watched that shit 
we were the first ones taught about, hey, maybe we should be, rec- we're the ones that told our parents we should be recycling. Gen, if it weren't for Gen X, you, where yeah, do you think those fucking no, no. recycling bins came from? You, uh, I, I, yeah, that's not us. That's not on us. And I, we I think also- that we, we were raised by oblivious parents, but I, yeah. I just don't think that I think that they just didn't know. But uh, who knew? I mean, before the Internet, you didn't. Uh, my mom still can't pick out Asia on a map. You know what I mean? Like, she has no idea that it's just more of a concept than an <laughs> actual can, place. She can tell you if it's Asia or Fog Hat. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I remember being a kid and being like, Dad, maybe we shouldn't burn our trash. And he's like, what are you going to do? Throw it in the land? That's not. That's not good. So it was, you know, he was crying. <laughs> the logic was not sound, but I, he was working with what he had. We had an oil pit. We dug what? a, we, yep, we had, a, when we changed the oil on the trucks or the tractors or what have you, we had an oil pit full of gravel and sand that uh, that we dumped, hmm. we used oil. It was an oil pit that was better. That was what you were supposed to do. But I was like, that can't be he's like well it came from the ground it's okay it filters through i don't think that's how this uh, works that's not no but if it weren't for us haranguing our those... parents going we're gonna die we gotta do something about this about recycling um also, we're the ones who are fucking scrubbing all those goddamn ducks off with dish soap come yeah. on yeah come we were, on god damn it yeah we were the ones out there volunteering to do that shit we were the so fuck you the disregarding your green issues all of us our generation was the first ones to start buying the stupid prius how's yours doing by the way oh it's great it's almost two hundred (laughs) thousand miles that thing is spectacular it just won't i love it i love it it was it runs great so uh yeah kiss my we just we also understand as a generation with that yeah we will well i mean one we went out and collected cans, filled up gra- garbage bags so that we could make extra money, knowing mm-hmm. that it's going to be recycled, but we're still getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. Great. But we also understood that it wasn't, you know, well, you better recycle that plastic bottle or, you know, you're going to kill all the sea turtles. No, it's this fucking giant corporation. Yeah. And Exxon that are killing the fucking sea creatures. But yeah, I'll do my part. But we understand we we're the ones that start chaining ourselves to trees, you dim bitch. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards dim bitch. Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, 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 no. Because I I remember that. Uh, no, no. I, we're the first shit. I, I get anxiety when I buy fucking cling wrap. You know what I mean? Like, do I really fucking need this? Should I be? Uh, let's get more foil. You can recycle that shit. Let's do that. Well, we've got um, it's cloth covered in beeswax that yeah that, i've seen those are those any good yeah they work great yeah all right yeah. i mean you know it's you can't you can't just flip stuff over it's not gonna but it covers up perfectly it, it who's keeps juggling their fucking leftovers anyway exactly <laughs> just trying to keep the air off of it. <laughs> yeah i just don't want it to taste like the other shit in my fridge <laughs> yeah right don't don't uh don't go fling it around the fucking casserole you'll be fine yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're great. We've got uh, like three or four different sizes. Um, here's um, mm, weird loyalty to brands. I'm gonna start saying it in how I think she talks. <laughs> Gen I can't wait Xers, to see how, how this evolves. Gen Xers st- said steadfast brand loyalty. While once a prevailing trend warrants reevaluation, numerous ethical, sustainable, and innovative businesses deserve exploration and support in today's landscape. It's time to consider change, throw our support behind companies aligning with our values, and prioritize a brighter, more conscientious future. You dim bitch. <laughs> She's got a fucking axe to grind, and I'm not sure exactly why. She what? dated a young Gen Xer that broke her heart, and he was probably a finance bro. Yeah, who's like really into Reeboks and Coca Cola, nothing else. Like yeah. I don't get that at all. Yeah, like we we were again, we we're the ones to sure in high school. Did I want Jordans? Of course. 
Everybody wanted Jordans. Mm. I mean, okay. A good portion of us want I wanted Jordans because I thought it would make me cool. Yeah, sure. Turns out what made me cool uh was when I went, I don't fucking care anymore. And uh found some really cool vintage hiking boots at the uh the the Salvation Army and started just dressing you know it, it had how i wanted to dress and not well, being we're all just whores to advertising on some level anyway right. even if it's subconscious you're like shit that got me and it's getting you too honey you're just it's for you it's etsy it's not puma yeah yeah thank you yes <laughs> let's uh but yeah you and i we did most of our shopping at secondhand stores yeah in college it- i did yeah, we don't, and we didn't care if it had what the brand was. Now, um, I got a pair of Air Force Ones upstairs. I don't know what that is. Nikes. Because okay. I had, I found them. Uh, they were the same. My sis, my older sister in junior high, had got me a pair of Air Force Ones to try and to make me look less poor. It was very <laughs> excellent. And they were white and blue. Uh, and I found that exact same pair. Uh, just in the size I wear now, several years ago. And I was like, f- and they were like 30 bucks. Nice. And I was like, yes, I'm buying these. And uh, so I, you know, I wear them on occasion. They're fun. Uh, but I've got, I've got like several pair of shoes that are from a company that recycles all the material and they're sharp looking shoes. Right. I, I, you know, it. and, and then I've got, a bit, I've got these, you know, several pair of big leather boots that have lasted 10, 15, 20 years that will last another 20 because I take good care of them. Mm-hmm. So they no, were made well the first time. Yeah. So brand loyalty, my fat cock. I don't know what a brand I'm loyal to. Well, I did just say Duke's Mayo. I am a fan. Right. Yep. I got to have, if it's Mayo, it's I am a fan. Duke's. I'm a fan. Cupy's good. Cupy's good too because it's got that MSG. I don't in like it. it. It's got that MSG in it, buddy. I oh, know, Daddy Likey. Yeah, see, MSG I think, goes in everything. I think for me, it's just that my, uh, you know, I just know my grandpa's fought so hard in World War II. I can't bring myself to. You know, what? we don't need to dive into any of that logic. I don't have the energy. I want to dip most of my ire to dim bitches today. Okay. So yeah. No, I'm, I'm joking. I a spring. joke to the people that have never listened to this. If this is your first show, that's a joke. <laughs> Larry's actually, he's he's thinking MSG comes from Germany, too. That's the yeah. underlying issue yeah. that we're just not going to touch. Um, he's positive that the Axis powers were just putting salt additives. Salt additives room. and meth in every <laughs> That was their super soldier serum. Um, um, my wife has left the house. <laughs> this crack pipe is savory. <laughs> uh, why does this glass pipe taste like everything bagel? <laughs> oh, um, this one's gonna piss you off. Great reluctance to embrace emerging food trends. Fuck you in a ray. Rap- a- if you saw it on TikTok, it's not a food trend. It's somebody cocking up dinner. Yes. I'll eat anything twice. Right? I, like The only thing I won't eat ever again is uni. Oh, see, I'll do uni. I got, I, I got no issue with that. What's wrong with a little bit of uh, sea urchin genital? I, I, didn't, I see. I, I don't, you know don't like it, but you but you've tried it. Yeah. I tried it. It w- and I didn't. It was the texture. The texture hit. But you, you're not going to like everything in the world. You know what I mean? No. But... I won't eat grapefruit. At gunpoint, I won't eat it. Yeah. Um. I. I I've eaten. We make plenty of avocado toast around this place. What is a food trend? Well, in okay. a rapidly evolving culinary landscape, characterized by the rise. Of plant-based diets and sustainable farming practices, Gen X must discard their resistance to these transformative trends. Embracing these changes leads to a healthier and more sustainable lifestyle. It aligns 
the growing global consciousness towards responsible food. Bitch! We were the first... And, okay, look, this this could have been Alan Wright, and I would still call the, the writer a dim bitch. Um, yeah, I, there's no reason not to make fun of her gender. Um, yeah, I, it has nothing to do... Fine. You dim <laughs> cock. You dim cock? I don't know. Bitch just has a better ring to it. Ridiculous twat? See, I'm trying to... We gotta go... I gotta make it not about gender, I guess. Oh, uh, stupid stupid cunt stupid, there it is, oh. <laughs> there it is. everyone's a stupid cunt yeah we were the first we, who do you think sustained farmers markets and they, I, I, farmers markets used to be fucking great too and i still go but now they're just overpriced bouge bags see and we 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 have great farmers markets here because we have i mean we're right in the middle of of illinois we have so many small sustainable farms that I mean that is they practice what they preach, um, and that's who we get our shit from, mm-hmm. um, and I love it. Also, the plant based baby, baby, baby. I look everything that we eat for the most part comes from a small farm. We could get some mangalitsa pork that was oh, it's like eating pork pillows every chop was like a pork pillow it's probably where i got my nut funk yeah like the pork <laughs> pillow between your legs when you're sleeping yeah you can't put the pork pillow between can't do legs. two or three nights of that without getting some funk yeah you're gonna get a funk uh yeah did but, you cook it you can't cook it no 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 tartar tartar <laughs> pork tartar Ugh. pork pillow nut funk tartar there's a food trend for you you dim bitch, you um, dim bitch. <laughs> i'll make you dinner let's just be angry i don't get that at all we like we're the ones that gen x was the ones that was like hey sushi good yeah <laughs> hey here's here who do you think started the the big brunch trend she's thinking my mother she's just thinking my mother's era you know, my mom won't eat a steak that isn't well done right because back when our parents were kids Everything had to be well done because um, you had to kill the bacteria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she freaked out when I served a uh, slightly pink pork chops. I was like, "You're gonna get sick." No, I'm not. Neither are you. <laughs> no, that's like with again that mango eats a pork. But the lady, the lady we were getting that that pork from, she's like, "Hey, I can't, it's, I can't do it anymore. It's too, it's too much work with these pigs because they." <laughs> They were very very specific breed that require a very specific thing, um, and she like bred them and did that. She was like, "I just can't. It's not worth it." <laughs> you have to fondle each teat counterclockwise three turns. Yes, I mean they all had to be massaged, and mm, and uh, if anybody doesn't like that, I don't care. Um, but it's it's the effort. I mean, you're shoving one whole pound of butter up a pig's ass every day. That's gonna be some good ham. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, well, and they they lived on acorns and walnuts, and <laughs> oh yeah, these things were they were a, de- a delectable treat, is what these critters were. But yeah, the re- reluctance to embrace food trends. I tried that impossible bullshit it's it's fine i got no issues with it but a lot of i i know uh the, actually the friends of mine that watch the dog they're vegetarian and they fucking hate that stuff like we don't like the way meat tastes yeah why do i want that she's like no i want like a bean burger i'm fine with that i don't i i purposely am avoiding meat i don't no no yeah. well that's uh, we eat a lot of just it's veg heavy or veg exclusive meals. Like yeah. I uh, will roast up um, Brussels sprouts and broccoli and mix that in with some uh, spaghetti squash and spice it up real good. I'm, I'll eat off that for a couple days. You know, I'll have that for dinner and then have it for lunch for a couple days. I love it. I don't need I, food trends. It's just food. And yeah. uh, I, I, this was the one that gets me. This one gets me. This one gets me as well. I'm not a computer person excuse. 
the I'm not a computer person excuse is outdated and inadequate in our tech driven world. Modern tech not somebody hurt her. Some <laughs> everyone must embrace technology and harness its numerous benefits for personal and professional growth. First Amanda, off, you can't say everyone has to anything. Truth. Unless the f- end of that sentence is breathe to live. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's not you no, no, no. No. You know, everybody doesn't have to do shit. It's that's just fucking self-entitled nonsense. Um we we were the last generation. we were the generation that, like didn't grow up with it, had to deal with it like around college, you know? I I love telling people like when I went to school, <laughs> high school, there was no internet. Not really. I never touched it until I was 19, I think. Well, yeah, I think I told you that uh, we got in trouble for looking up the autopsy pictures of Kurt Cobain. Oh, like, okay. The pictures of Kurt Cobain and the autopsy pictures of uh, Chris Farley. And then also, a um, buddy of mine and I figured out how to hack into the grades. Because everything <laughs> was... And, like, we didn't do anything. But we just figured out how to get in. And look It'd around. be pretty easy back in the day. Like there's no, encry- oh, yeah. there's no firewalls. There's no encrypting. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm like I was J- Johnny Lee Miller or anything. You know? <laughs> I was no hackers. It wasn't, uh, but it was like we we figured it out and we're like, oh shit, look look what we can do. And then we got in big trouble for that as well. But I mean, yeah, it was it was pretty simple. But we had to learn. Gen X was like the first, especially our era of gen x i bet you my little needle league high school i don't think the grades were on a computer anywhere i think it was still fucking no i'm, I'm not kidding yeah. i think it was in a file cabinet right no you i was know? gonna say probably but we're like we're that generation that we if you put a rotary phone in front of us we're like oh yeah i can use that yeah or right a card catalog or fish like either where we have to uh fish. like uh fish like the uh microfish Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I handed this bass to a child, and she had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> she refused to do anything but run. Dip, dip, all I'm doing is dip, dip, no, to hit it on. She hit it with, on a rock until it stopped twitching. <laughs> Walking around with this blue Lowe's bucket full of fish, and these children won't take any of them. What am I doing on this street? <laughs> why does this crack pot and pipe taste like bagel oh <laughs> uh, yeah i just but we can use every you, know, you hand me any phone i can kind of i can figure it out you know I am i enough. Yeah, I yeah it's uh no although i do refuse to to touch excel it's terrifying i hate it oh see i'm really good at excel nah fuck excel it's pointless. I would love to live a life where spreadsheets were never something that I had to touch. And I used to have that. I don't have that anymore. Right, I want yeah. that again. I I do. I want that again. I don't like... Oh, you know, fuck this bitch. I don't like computers. If I, if, I could, if I could live my life where I never had to touch a plastic fucking box again, I'd be just fine with that. I wish well, I could they, make furniture or something. You're going to agree with Amanda on this next one. Plastic, not so fantastic. What? I read it. Is this is this is this okay? Is this the pro the 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 man made just plastic in general? Is she talking about credit? Um, single use plastics. Here's what I here's but Uh, here's my problem. Okay, single use plastics, once seen as a convenient necessity, have become a pressing environmental concern. With the planet's health at stake, it's imperative to move away from the outdated Gen X trend and transition to more sustainable alternatives that help reduce the harmful impact of plastic. But they're not showing the picture is not showing single use plastics. It's showing the like storage plastic like Tupperware. <laughs> Excellent. So uh Amanda. Ugh. But also you're thinking again you're thinking our parents you're thinking 
See, I take my bags to the fucking store. And by the way, I'm the only one doing that in Florida. I'm positive I'm the only one doing yeah. that in Florida. But I but the problem is I take I um I take my bags to the fucking store, the reusable like cloth bags, which is fine. But everything I'm buying from the from the store comes in plastic. <laughs> comes in plastic that I have no use for. You know what I mean? Fucking every deli meat, cheese slice, fucking everything. I don't even like use the little bags anymore for produce. I just put it right in the bag and I wash it when I get home. But yeah. Mm-hmm. G- give me a fucking paper straw and a plastic cup. What are we doing here? Let's reverse that, please, for Christ's sake. Because a plastic cup never killed one fucking turtle on, on Twitter. So now I get this fucking stupid straw that's going to destroy itself in a plastic cup. Yeah. Stop it. Stop yep. it. Reverse that. How about if just a little bit of plastic and give me a paper cup? It'll be fine. Well, just give me all paper. I'd be fine with that, too. <laughs> fucking nitwits. Uh, oh, here's... This this Shit, one. I just said I fucking have anxiety when I buy cling wrap now. I yeah. almost never do. Yeah. No, we we have we have a roll of cling wrap that I think we've had for a decade. <laughs> um, because we try not to use it. Because what we use, well, like if we get takeout, and they you know they put like Chinese takeout has sends everything in plastic containers. Mm-hmm. That can be rewashed. And oh, those re-washed. are fine. You, yeah, I we use uh, hell. I half the time when I carry my lunch in, if I'm going sure. into the office. I so Amanda. Well, what does she think I'm doing? Just sitting there with like fucking sandwich baggies, licking them and throwing them away one at yeah. a time, and cackling hysterically. Yes. Shit! I still put the plastic bottles in my recycling. That I know are being thrown away when they leave my house. Yep. They're just going to a landfill somewhere. I know they are. And I'm paying. In Florida, you have to pay extra for recycling service. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, we recycle everything we can recycle. It's... Here's... This, this one is confusing. This one confuses the living shit out of me. Okay. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it the way I think she wrote it. This is how, in my head, how she sounds. Inappropriate casual Fridays. What? Casual Fridays were initially a way to enjoy a bit of relaxed attire at work. However, some Gen Xers have pushed the boundaries, sometimes crossing into inappropriate territory. <laughs> It's time to restore the balance by reintroducing professionalism while preserving the casual and friendly atmosphere that casual Fridays were meant to offer. What's her fucking issue? Apparently, Gen she's X... pissed at the at the concept of not having to wear a tie on Friday. <laughs> How do you take casual Friday too far? I fucking hate dress codes anyway i i detest yeah i i I haven't worn socks in a year you know what i mean like i don't i I just think it's ridiculous but well that's like they used to have a rule at work like you could only wear shorts on thursdays and this that and the other and then pandemic happened there's not a lot of people in the office a handful of us come in and a lot of us are just like nope we're going to wear shorts until i absolutely until I get frostbite walking from my car to the office. Just to <laughs> prove a point. I can still do my job if I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Because I don't have to deal directly with... Like, I don't have to be face-to-face with anybody. Mm. Yeah. I The claimants, I just have to sound professional. They don't need to know that I'm wearing a t-shirt that says, like, you know, Beer Fest, you know, 2013 or whatever. Half the time, I'm not even wearing a shirt. If I'm totally honest, when I'm working, yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? I, I I bathe sometime around two. You know what I mean? I don't I don't understand what her issue is there. She would have to talk me through that, but then I'd have to be in the same room with her. Uh, and I don't think that's. I don't think we like Amanda right. No. What's her middle name? Isn't? Uh, <laughs> ah, I got you, Amanda. Plagued Dude. with material possessions. Again, no. you're thinking of the boomers. Let's just move yes. on from this one. This one hurts me. She's, she's absolutely thinking of the boomers. I still can't convince my mother that I don't want more stuff. 
It's like I, she tried to tell me, I've been saving this crib for you. I'm like, no, you haven't. I'm 45. I just decided that I was going to have a baby about nine months ago. So I never asked you for this. I don't want these things. I, I'm not, I don't have affection for items. She kept giving me stuff with literally with the phrase, I don't care if you want it. I want you to have it. Uh, okay, I'll throw it away when you leave. Like, what, you, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. I don't care if you want it. I want you to have... Okay. Yeah, like, how are you forcing a gift to me and making it about you at the same time? <laughs> that's very interesting to me. Yeah, that's, Maybe that's Amanda could shit. write about that. That's boomer shit, man. Mm-hmm. This... Mm-hmm, this pisses me off because... Old school parenting practices. Specific conventional parenting methods from the Gen X era, like the authoritative style, may no longer align with today's child center approach. It's essential to evolve, acquire new knowledge, and embrace more empathetic and understanding parenting methods that cater to our children's needs and sensitivities in the contemporary w- motherfucker. This bitch has a one son, or he has no kids. She has one son. His name is probably Harper Hawthorne. Uh, no, no, I no. because that's I saw what my parents did and went, all right, I'm going to do the opposite and have been. Now you have to balance it. You can't. It can't all be child centered because otherwise, you get um, a child that is an entitled cunt. And Correct. <laughs> When they go across the monkey bars, you pray that they fall just wrong um, and read into that however you want. Yes, I am that way. Um, but you have to balance it between, hey, buddy, what's going on? I know that's not like you to have you had a temper tantrum. What's up? And that but if it continues, you're like, OK, well, that's enough. That's enough. Hey, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> I, my thing would be, hey, let's talk about it. Let's. You're not going to calm down. You're not going to calm. All right. You're. Oh, you're going to continue to be an asshole. Great. And I would just pick my kid up above my head, one handed, just to remind them that I'm bigger and stronger and patient. I'm just going to have to light my daughter on fire. I think uh, she's already going to like your kids. Just going to come out in fuego. Yeah, she's going to have a real fear of accelerants. Sorry, this is all new to me. Like I, I read the first four, few. This okay. one, I'm sorry. No, she's uh, she's just gonna, she's not gonna be afraid of anything. That kid, she's. Fine. Well, she's living amongst the lizards. Um, <laughs> and I if she know, is afraid, she's going to pretend that she's not. I think, I think it's fun being a first-time dad at my age, because everybody's like, "What kind of dad? How, how are you? What, what practices are you gonna?" Like, I'm gonna fucking make it up as I go along. I, I'm not worried about it. That's I'll what you do. If anyone tells you that they didn't make it up while they went along, yeah, no, they're I'll a fucking fine. liar. And I had to, I've had to do it three different times because each kid is a different kid and each one had to have a separate approach. Like Glenn, I could just look at and be like, and he'd be like, oh my God, what did I do? And he would say, oh, fix it. Let me be better. Uh, Willow required a uh, a two day conversation <laughs> where I had to have charts and graphs to present my point as she's <laughs> sitting in her crib going, hmm, I, I, I see where you're coming from, Daddy, but we're going to need a little bit more clarification. And Gideon would just, it was just a baseball bat with a nail through it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, good. Good boy, get off! Get off the dog! You needed to be armed like you were an extra in The Walking Dead. Yes, because that kid would just <sighs> son of a bitch. Because he would be silent for so long that all of a sudden he'd be like, and just blow up. And you're like, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, get the duct tape again. Um... <laughs> the crawl space is well lit. That's the thing. It's warm. It's well lit. He'll be fine. Just put him down there for an hour or two until he gnaws his way out. Just half open a can of Dinty Moore and throw him in. <laughs> Just enough that he can rip it open, but th- so the mice can't get to it. Correct. This, mm, a dose of gratitude. Well, 
While Gen Xers faced their own challenges, they also enjoyed significant, sometimes overlooked advantages. It's essential to recognize past privileges, such as accessible education and affordable housing, and strive to extend these opportunities to future generations. By acknowledging these advantages, we can work towards create. You're thinking the boomers. Yeah, you really are. Again. Oh my uh, God. How housing many of housing and college is ridiculously too expensive. Um, one, how many of our friends went military because they couldn't afford college? Mm-hmm. Uh, two, uh, I know you paid off your student loan. Yep. Guess who's still paying his off? Yeah. Now, do I throw extra money at it now that I can? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now that I can afford to do it. Yes. And, and it... Ange just finished paying off hers now that we had to again. <laughs> yeah. We th- we've been thinking that it was forgiven for three years. Like, nope, sorry. We, we tried. Um, yeah, well, that was the other thing. I was like, I was like, oh, am I gonna? Nope, I don't qualify for the forgiveness, uh, for the loan forgiveness. So, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll talk about parenting techniques again. You're thinking of the boomers because, like you said, I didn't even realize that I had student loans that were in my name until I was a junior. I didn't realize that I was the one paying the back. Yeah, my dad lied to me. Yeah, and I still worked my entire time through college. I had a job every fucking day. Yeah, I. Uh... Yeah, I worked. I well, and then when I went back to college, I mean, I worked when I my first part time. Let's, let's be honest. I, I didn't have a job every day, but I worked part time the entire time I was in college. Yeah, and when Full I went time back, in the summers, I worked four nights a week at the bar. Um, and then I also had two internships. One was paid, one was not. I also did uh, landscaping during the summer. Um. I would occasionally pick up handyman gigs. Um, I worked my tits off to be able to afford just the books. Your tits never had a chance. No, they really didn't, man. They really didn't. Um, so, yeah, well, I agree. Um, housing was more affordable when I tried to, when, when I bought my first house. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> and I say, bah. I bought my first house with my ex-wife, who was then given the house, uh, which fine. We have very similar stories there. Yeah. It should then, have it. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of, I was like, That's, I don't. Mm. Um, and then uh, th- th- my my lovely bride now, when she, the house was in her name, mm-hmm. she, we refinanced and put me on the mortgage because we figured out I'm not going anywhere and she's keeping me around so we can do that. Um, and we refinanced at a really good rate a few years ago. Um, but right now, like the only way we could make a down payment on another home is if we sold this one first. We bought when we did because we could afford the down payment because I was hit by a car. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's your, that's our privileges right there. Um, it was it easier twenty years ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I will say it was. was. Yeah, my yeah. first house cost less than half of what this one did, but it was also a piece of shit. But yeah, I mean, the our house, I, I it's a great house, it's a great great house that we live in. It's got its problems, um, but we were able to. We finally got after years of me patching it back together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, got character. You've got a toilet hole. Yeah. <laughs> um you've got the hole of toilets should go on at some point. <laughs> the toilet's still there. It's just <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's it's there's there's issues, but you know, we were able to to get oh god. Man, this is getting worse. I love uh, I love when when things get worse as the day goes on, it's supposed to get loosened up and better. No, 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 not, not in your mid forties, uh, your mid forties. It's just take an Advil and try not to eat the barrel. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's all you got. Speaking of which, I think we've gone over. I don't know if we, we have, can. hold on. Let's do yeah. a lightning round. Okay. Mobile games obsession. We're obs- uh, apparently obsessed with mobile games. Ooh, I thought we, wait, no, no, no. No, no, no. 
No. No, no, no. The initial fun that Gen Xers no. found in mobile games may have seemed harmless. Still, it has increasingly resulted in excessive screen time and a detachment from real world connections. What? That is, this this bitch is just uppity. She's just yeah. she she has a lot of rules that everybody should follow because she thinks so. What is she a known expert in besides just being bitchy? Uh, I have no idea. I'll scroll down here in a second. I work uh, with a forty nine year old and he sucks. That's basically what this is. Misjudging today's youth. Um. <laughs> It's essential to recognize that each generation faces unique challenges and businesses' strengths. Rather than passing judgment, let's shift our perspective towards understanding and appreciating the younger generations for tenacity, resilience, and innovative spirit. Fuck you. Fuck you. You are not the first person to realize that people, when they get older, look at younger generations and go, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of that's been the thing. So uh, for a couple hundred years, I was, since the since since the uh, industrial revolution, I think. Yeah. Been, I just don't understand why they don't want to ride horses everywhere. You know what I mean? Like it's been a thing. So just why, calm down. why don't they want to work in the coal mines? That's a great job. <laughs> it was yeah. fine for me. <laughs> Black lung was just fine for me and my dad. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, dismissing no. mental health maintenance. Fuck yourself. I've had a, no. I've had a shrink for a while. We're Again, one of the first generations to go, you know what? Uh, I should probably get some help. You know why? Because <sighs> we were all angsty and fucked up. Mm -hmm. because, and we went, oh, man, I'm real. And we just, for a while, self-medicated. And then we hit a point where we're like, well, these hangovers don't fix themselves anymore. I should probably <laughs> talk to a professional. <laughs> Recognizing the difference between authority and disrespect. I don't even care. No, let's not even let's not go there. Um, because that was that's a hallmark. You mean like like uh, like telling off a cop in the middle of a concert at State Fair? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay, I mean, come on, a hallmark of our generation was like whatever, man. Uh, <laughs> you have no. What are you gonna do? Take away my birthday? I don't think so, bitch. Uh. Uh, I, I don't need this job at this fucking McDonald's. I... Yeah, there's a whole lot of fuck it. Oh, fuck it was my uh, was my theme song. It was my my motto, my mantra for a very long time. Well, you were talking about going to the to, to the store at Bradley. I remember because they had the that Millican hats and they had the you could embroider you get whatever you want written on it. Right? It was like <laughs> the actual embroider wasn't like printed on there or anything. And I just had that hat that said um dot 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 uh dot dot dot. Yep, Millican <laughs> University. Yep. Yep, and it was one of my very favorite things. <laughs> yep. So yeah, no, not uh, being too precious about that. So, so that that whole recognizing the difference between authority and disrespect is, yeah, apparently that's a workplace thing. But then immediately following, all work and no play is not okay. Yeah, Gen X doesn't have an issue with that. <laughs> no. Know? No, we're all angry that we have to work. We we were prom we were promised of uh, grunge rock and sitting on our ass and blimpies and we got old and we're like fuck. Yeah. God that. damn it. Fine. Um, social media overload. Nope. Let's just not on it at all. Huh. Send cynicism to the history books. Don't have to keep cynicism. Uh, I apologize, Miss Wright. Uh, without that, I would literally fall apart. It's the glue holding my joints together. <laughs> See, and I'm I'm okay. I I'm okay with uh, calling my cynicism realism. Uh, I just I refer to it as such. So, uh, no, I am full bore cynic. Uh, and uh, she's gonna have to fucking deal with it because uh, she uh, she uh, let her feelings be heard on that one. <laughs> That's fine. Your opinions have been noted as they are apparently uh, uh, just uh, never mind. Too old, too angry, too old, too angry. Uh, the new, the new Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fast and Furious and the uh, the, the, the what's the slash the low movies that are all old people with guns? Oh, uh, the Expendables. Yeah, th those two should have a crossover. Yeah, I think they do. I think it's just what it is now. It's <laughs> so ridiculous. You know, I still have never seen a Fast and Furious movie. 
Really? I'm, pre- I'm pretty excited about that. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think they're I, fun. I'm I don't. Good. They're not good movies. They're fun movies. No, I'm fine. I still haven't seen John Wick either. Wow. Yeah, not interested. Uh, it's just action for action sake's never been my thing. Oh, see, and I, I, I just like brain candy. Yeah. All right. I like um, crystal meth. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's enough of this. Yeah. So she is confusing uh, ge- generations there um, quite a bit, in my humble opinion. See, that's what she uh, f- failed to put on any of these, is that it's uh, her opinion. Uh, she's presenting them as facts for yes. other people. Hey, everybody, listen to me. I know how to fix everything. <laughs> hey, guys. Yep. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, well, thanks for letting me spend the rest of my Sunday sober with that bitch in my brain. Yeah, sorry about that. I forgot. forgot. Mm. Hey, congratulations on your first day. One day. Well, it's not like this is like the rest of my life. No. No. Dear God, no. It no. better not be. <laughs> no, no. What are you talking about? Cynicism is going to be cranked up because it's half cynicism, half booze. So if we get rid of one, can't run on a too lean of a mixture, I'll explode. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, it worries me. That's uh, so. Okay. As long as. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, just curious what I'm going to do with my time. You're going to have to pick up a hobby. <sighs> I've been sober since, well, let's be honest, two hours after I woke up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because we definitely did it in style yesterday <laughs> um and did it with a fire what am i doing uh and i'm already bored yeah, See, yeah. i say i spent the past couple of days pretty sober because you know we've had stuff to do and shows mm-hmm. last night and speaking of which uh planet entertainment in Mattoon, illinois fucking rad place uh real quick uh the owner rob uh sweetheart of a man um his showroom is a great showroom, um, but it's also got a casino and uh, an arcade, like an old school arcade. Casino? Um, yeah, like I mean, a casino. They, they like an Illinois casino, you know the. Uh, what what's legal now? Like the like the poker machines and shit. Yeah, poker machines, yeah. machines, stuff like that. But he's got. I mean, it's like a really big, nice one, nice, um, and a full bar and food and just it's a great place so uh planet entertainment in Mattoon, illinois uh catch the fever catch it all right i'm gonna see if maybe we can i can extract the sound files and i'll be surprised i'll be anxiously awaiting knowing if this is a show i will let you know if nothing else this will be on youtube Zing and Larry, <laughs> YouTube. 38 people 38 hey you know what that's better than we had two years ago so mm, catch the fever <laughs> your balls have caught the fever balls have caught something It's about hanging out with these guys. Yep. God damn it, son of a bitch, motherfucker. So now it's gonna be it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.